Hi, I'm Arti, and these are four books about sketchbooks that I flip through whenever I need a little inspiration. This one in particular is excellent as a primer for anyone who wants to create a sketchbook, and I will give you a little sketchbook tour of my own textile workbook from my silk painting days. And at the end of this video, I'll show you a sneak peek into my current idea book. Let's begin with Extraordinary Sketchbooks by Jane Stobart. A printmaker herself, she has curated an inspiring gallery of 31 practitioners from as young as a teenager to someone as well known as Henry Moore. The author herself is also included in the book. I'm going to flip through some of the pages that I love in this book rather than every single page. And I think you might find some of these inspiring as well as surprising in the variety of kinds of sketchbooks that people keep. You've probably watched a fair few sketchbook tours. I certainly have, and I've done a fair few myself. But a sketchbook can be more than just an art book with finished pieces in it. It really depends on the individual artist's process. Drawings, annotation, finished pieces, process pieces, experimentation, perhaps even discovering a method or a technique that you want to actually use in final finished work. This book actually showcases a fair variety of them. They include studies, what looks like preparatory work for final finished pieces, as well as process work for maybe a series of things, putting in details, observing nature, making notes and annotations, kind of like a nature journal, observations of textures and shapes that will be used later on in work, or is just an artist's exploration of the subjects that they're interested in things that they want to explore without actually having to make a finished piece. And that's what a sketchbook is. A sketchbook may be a compilation of quick drawings and notes, a collection of flowers, leaves or minutiae, careful observations, like I said, a nature journal, poems or quotes that you find inspiring, pieces of textiles or thread, Technical information, annotations, instructions, you could put in found items, it could be used for design development, you could support it with putting photography or collage in it. It can also be for targets, actions and plans. I should say here that my own personal opinion on sketchbooks is that they are a daily exploration of the interests of an artist. Many artists would do a sketchbook tour of completely finished pieces in a sketchbook. I would consider that more an art book rather than a working sketchbook. The nature of sketchbooks is to provide a clarity of vision and a reference point for the artist to go back to time and again. They bring a fluency of thought and understanding that is hard to find when you're just mulling thoughts over in your head. And it's also a place to develop your own artist's vocabulary and ideas, plus a trigger for memory or association sometime in the future when you're looking back at it. The artists in this book all practice all of these aspects in an excellent manner. It's a really, really inspiring book. The next one is An Illustrated Life. Drawing Inspiration from the Private Sketchbooks of Artists, Illustrators and Designers by Danny Gregory. I love that they included the word private in the title because that's really what sketchbooks are all about. Each of the 49 artists in this book, 50 if you include the author whose work is included in his introduction, has let you into a very private part of their lives. Sketchbooks are not generally open to the public to flip through just like your Instagram page or your website. The majority of artists do not do sketchbook tours on YouTube. They keep their books extremely close. They are almost like an everyday journal, but pictorial. This book includes little quotes that absolutely personify this. As you turn the pages, you'll feel the time pass. You see moments being recorded in sequence. You see ideas unfold and deepen. You see the psyche of the artist. You can almost see what their brain is thinking about before they've actually made their final piece, before it's visible to all and sundry. One of the things that makes this book different from extraordinary sketchbooks is that the text is written by the artists themselves. There are little quotes as well as small details like sketchbook covers, workspaces, and it's more personal as opposed to the more curated feel of extraordinary sketchbooks where the author has written about the artist. It does make me wonder how much input the artists had in what was displayed in this book. Did they just send particular images that they wanted included? Did they send across an entire sketchbook and the author picked what he wanted to include? How did this book come about? How was it curated? The author's introduction starts, 
I have been looking for this book since I was a boy drawing at the kitchen table. I've looked for it in dusty second-hand bookshops, in the art sections of libraries, in online bookstores and in auction houses. Because I never found it, I had to put it together myself. A book full of sketchbooks and illustrated journals from all sorts of people who love nothing better than to hunch over a little book and fill its pages with lines and colour. Each of the books is a slender slice of life that could be weeks long or months or years, depends on the habits of the artist and the thickness of the volume. And the approach is as varied as the lives the pages record. Some journal keepers are methodical, bound by rules that instill regularity and consistency. Others are wildly improvisational, radically changing style, medium and subject. The pages almost unrecognizable as being from a single hand. One of the artists, Tom Kane, says, I take about 30 seconds to literally blast out whatever's on the tip of my brain, whereas it's obvious that others in this book have spent hours, perhaps, on one single piece that's displayed. And Everett Peck speaks for us all when he says, Taken as a whole, you have a sequential gestalt of your drawing experiences over a given period of time that you don't really get when doing individual pieces. An illustrated life isn't just a visual thing. Because the text has been written by the artists themselves, there's a lot of insight into the images that you're seeing as the sketchbooks, but also into what the artists thought, why they keep a sketchbook, and various other insights, which is quite reassuring to hear that other artists, no matter how successful or unknown they might be, do also feel. For example, one is that working quickly is often associated with a casual attitude or laziness, and that is very much not true. Sometimes an artist's brain works way faster than their hands, and the only way to express themselves is to be quick. It often, in fact, indicates skill or years of experience. And quite frankly, when you're thinking about ideas, all you really need is a quick sketch to express what you were thinking. And because it's in your sketchbook, nobody else needs to make any sense of it but you simply because all you're doing is pausing, recording, reflecting, and moving on. But in reality, the purpose of these books that I'm showing you is just to inspire, to be amazed at the variety of art that people can create, to wonder at the thoughts and feelings of the artists who are represented in these books, and to marvel at the skill within the pages of their sketchbook. It is also a wonderful way of discovering new work, new artists that you might not have heard of before. For one of any number of reasons, they might be unknown, they might be young, still in school, still studying, they might be well known but not share their work on social media or anywhere else that you are likely to see it. They might be super well established but they have never shown this particular work, their sketchbooks, ever before. And one of the reasons definitely could be that their final artwork that they do show to the world looks absolutely nothing like the work in the sketchbook that you really enjoy. And that's why books like these are an absolutely wonderful way to discover new work. The third anthology of sketchbooks is The Hidden Art of Designers, Illustrators and Creators by Richard Brereton. This is a slightly different book from the previous two in that the work here is far more graphic. The cover blurb for this book bears this out as it says, Intimate and often unseen sketchbooks provide a revealing glimpse into the inner workings and private inspiration from the world of advertising design, graphic design, fashion design, art, street art and illustration. Sketchbooks document the sources of inspiration as well as the journey to final execution. The text of this book is again different from Extraordinary Sketchbooks and An Illustrated Life. Each artist has a small bio, probably written by the author or compiler of this book. Then there's a little section written by the artist themselves explaining their process or the way they make art or sketchbooks. And then each sketchbook page has an individual caption. Yes, some of the pages do have just a caption that says untitled sketchbook pages or whatever but it's really interesting to see the ones that do because they mention a place or a time or an actual subject. And it's really nice to see those little details, which the previous two books actually don't have captions for the sketchbooks. Another difference is that in the previous two books, work is definitely more artistic in the sense of being more fine art related or illustration related. In this case, it seems to be far more graphic and I guess that would be related more to the actual upfront careers of the illustrators, designers, street artists featured in this book. I don't know how much of this will actually translate into their everyday work. Perhaps they never do. 
And for many of these artists, you never know, this could be a hidden outlet that they really never share. Because I do know that when I was a full-time book designer, I really didn't have much of an outlet for my artistic self. And I used to draw and paint completely different work from what I was putting out as a designer. 99% of the people featured in this book I have literally never heard of just in this book and I've looked them up afterwards. But one of the names that was familiar was Oliver Jeffers, the illustrator. But the work that's displayed here is so very different from his illustrated books. I was quite surprised to see this stuff. It was really interesting to see. His is also one of the only pages that is sideways like that. One of the reasons I love this book is the juxtaposition of quirky things like this and then more traditional art like this page. It really makes you want to delve deeper into the work of the artists that are featured and to see more of their thought process as well as their actual work in real life. Like look at this page of helicopters. Delightful. It really brings joy whether it's this book of more graphic illustration by various designers or slightly more artistic work in extraordinary sketchbooks or illustrated life. But if you're starting a sketchbook, this is the book to get. It's called Creating Sketchbooks by Kay Greenlease. But before we go through it, let's have a look at my own idea book or sketchbook. It's an accordion book which has this little case by C. White of Brighton. It's quite thick and doesn't quite fit in there anymore, but you'll see exactly why in a moment. This accordion sketchbook opens both ways, but I'm going to show you the right hand side first. This is how I work in collections using samples of color, little notes, doing a little collection layout, adding in any details that I feel I need to experiment with. And everything is stuck on here if it's a sample, but I can also draw directly in the sketchbook because it's nice paper like I've done here. In addition, I've got dye samples on the actual silk and in my idea book slash sketchbook, I tend to work by collection rather than chronologically. I also have some larger pieces in here so that I can refer to them later. They're just test sample pieces. They just happen to be a bit larger than the regular size. Because the sketchbook doesn't have a front and a back, I also do tend to flip it around when I change collection. And sometimes this helps to create a distinction between the sections. Here are some more samples. I'm just testing out different materials, different ways of mark making on the silk and trying to figure out what I should use. I've also stuck in a scarf plan or two here when I was requested to make some custom scarves for people. On the other side of the accordion, there are more samples, more color mixing, more testing textures and silk dye accessories. And then of course I've flipped around. So let's switch the sketchbook back around to the other side. And here's my dashing collection, working out patterns, deciding what colors to use, and also a little bit of research based on shapes, lines. That's what the whole collection was based on. I never showed the sketchbook to anyone because these were my ideas for collections I was working on at that time. I did not want to share things before I'd actually brought them to fruition. And I also did not feel that people would understand samples like these when I was trying to convey an overall feel. <laughs> Whereas they had meaning to me, to anybody who's just looking at them, it's just a random scrap piece of material with a bunch of blobs on it or maybe some block printing like here or some lines and random squiggles on it. Let's come back to creating sketchbooks for embroiderers and textile artists. It is a primer on how to create a sketchbook. This is catering mainly to textile artists, but I feel that it is relevant to anybody who wants to create a sketchbook. A sketchbook doesn't necessarily have to be for a textile artist in order to have stuff stuck in, textures, ephemera, stitched pages, all these things that can inspire and help you to create the art that you want to create. Whatever you call your sketchbook, your notebook, journal, visual idea book, visual diary, workbook, or don't call it a sketchbook at all, it's a commonplace book or a project book. Whatever you call it, it is a commitment to discovering and investigating the things that you're interested in. Purposes for creating sketchbooks can overlap or you can have a variety of combinations completely depending on the individual. It may vary from book to book, from project to project, through time. You may even have several sketchbooks on the go at the same time like I do. Your sketchbook is about expressing and imagining 
and also inventing and designing things that you want to do or make. This book illustrates that beautifully by showing you sketchbook pages along with finished work. This book takes you all the way from a basic introduction, defining a sketchbook, the reasons why you should use one, the purposes of it, how to observe, research, express, invent, design, like I said. And then it defines a textile artist's particular way of seeing things. Using samples, sketching using collage texture and pattern, and then using models, but also not working within a sketchbook necessarily. Separate pieces of paper and cloth can also be combined into a sketchbook. It also covers sketching on location or working with research in a museum, for example. For such a slim book, it is a treasure trove of information. I got the other three books secondhand, but this one was a gift from my husband and what a book. It is absolutely one of my favorite books to go through, even though I already have multiple sketchbooks. This page in particular is one of my favorites. Look at the inspiration and then what looks like the finished work. Absolutely gorgeous. This book also prompts you to ask questions about things that you're sketching. What are the physical features? How is it constructed? What is the function? How does it design? What is the value of it to the people who made it or use it or keep it? It then goes on to questions about making choices about the kind of sketchbook you should get and going beyond a conventional one. At the end, it gives you a little bit of technical information about sketching, exploring mark making, and then techniques for coloring pages and a very simple sketchbook to make. I have had this book for several years now and every time I open it, it teaches me something new. I read through it multiple times and flipped through it almost every week. I showed you my scarf sketchbook and here's the one I used for ties, cravats, jewelry, all that sort of stuff, more accessories. I did drawings of them, put in samples. I actually did make these necklaces and sell them. These were samples for a custom bespoke project. And then these were samples that I did when I made masks for the pandemic. I did a whole selection and uh, sent all the profits to the NHS and until last year I was still making them. There were also a few ideas for turban headbands and scrunchies that I never ended up making. On the other side I have cravats and ties which I did make. I still have some left with me and the rest of the sketchbook is still empty to be used because I shut down my silks in 2022. And now it's finally time for that sneak peek of my current project book, which is this. It says Nautilus and Balloons, but there's way more than that in there now. This is my Nautilus series. I did all my research, put in all the thoughts that I consolidated, practiced backgrounds, textures, some patterns, the elements that I wanted to use in it, and color testing swatches that I obviously haven't stuck properly inside. I'm not entirely finished with this Nautilus shape, I will take it further, but I've already done one set of paintings on canvas and on paper and exhibited it at the Landmark Art Centre in Teddington. In addition to works on large and small canvases, I made work on silk and on paper in gouache. The other ongoing project in this book is these abstract fruits. You've already seen four of these pieces probably in my shop and there will be more soon. For these, I worked out patterns and styles and then worked simultaneously in my sketchbook, figuring out colors and so on. And here are the four finished pieces. The pink pomegranate has already gone to a new home when it was exhibited, but I have more in the works and I have more plans for the rest of the series, as well as some secret, oops, <laughs> nearly showed you a secret project there. I have more work in this that will be coming soon, but I'm not ready to share my ideas or show you the thought process that's in here yet. I hope this video inspired you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.